Let's talk about duality. Duality is a mathematical technique that allows us to have two different perspectives on the same class of structures. Often one of these perspectives is geometrical, whereas the other perspective is logical. The mother of all dualities, stone duality, is a duality between Boolean algebras and certain topological spaces that we now know as stone spaces. Subsequently, we've seen dualities between distributive lattices and what is now known as Priestley spaces, and also hating algebras and so-called Isakia spaces. In the context of modal logic, duality allows us to connect the algebraic semantics and the frame semantics of a given logic. This is well known and established for descriptive frames on the one side and Boolean algebras with operators on the other side, and it's also been developed for positive modal algebras and so-called k-plus spaces. The last two are specifically interesting because, as it turns out, these two dualities naturally arise as a duality between algebras on the one side, describing the algebraic aspect, and co-algebras that describe the spaces or frames on the other side. One observation, however, is that a duality between modal hating algebras and modal intuitionistic spaces hasn't so far been established as an instance of a more general algebra-co-algebra -algebra duality until now. To see why, let's look at an example. We take the simplest intuitionistic modal logic, where we just add a box to the language of propositional logic, and we stipulate that box distributes over finite means. This logic is interpreted in box frames, which are intuitionistic Kripke frames, that are equipped with an extra relation to interpret the box modality. In the literature, one sees that this relation is required to satisfy a compatibility condition, mainly to ensure that the interpretation of formulae is persistent. The interpretation itself is mostly standard in that intuitionistic connectives are interpreted as in the underlying intuitionistic Kripke frame, and X makes the formula box phi true if phi holds in all relational successors of X. To put this into a coalgebraic setting, we need a category and a functor on this category. F coalgebras are then pairs X, gamma, where gamma is a morphism from X to Fx. We can then model box frames as coalgebras on the category of posets for the upper power set functor. The upper power set functor takes a poset and maps it to the poset of its upsets ordered by reverse inclusion. This allows us to go back and forth between box frames and coalgebras for the upper power set functor, where one direction from box frames to coalgebras goes via defining the structure map to map every state to its relational successes. So far, this looks quite promising. However, not all is well when we look at morphisms. Coalgebra morphisms are morphisms between the object part, that is the x and y part of coalgebras, that make the expected diagram commute. In particular, in our example, Morphisms live in the category of posets, that means that they're monotone maps. As a consequence, these morphisms do not preserve the interpretation of logical connectives because monotone maps don't preserve hating implication. To repair this, one could take bounded morphisms instead, that is, morphisms between intuitionistic Kripke frames. But then the coalgebra structure map gamma would also need to be a bounded morphism, which means that we would lose the correspondence with box frames. What we want here is that morphisms between structures are bounded morphisms, whereas the structure maps themselves are just monotone maps. One way to achieve this is by using dialgebras. Given a pair of functors G and F from a category C to a category D, a GF dialgebra is just a map gamma from GX to FX for an object X of the category C. 
Dialgebra morphisms are just C morphisms between the object part that again make the expected diagram commute. This now allows us to separate out the category of posets into the category pos of posets with monotone morphisms and the category crib of intuitionistic cryptic frames and bounded morphisms and we can have box frames and their morphisms as dialgebras for a pair of functors. One functor is just the inclusion of Kripke frames into posets and the other functor is the upper power set functor that we've already seen but now conceive as a functor that maps an intuitionistic Kripke frame to a poset. Interestingly, the same also works for hating algebras with operators that constitute the algebraic semantics of intuitionistic modal logics. Hating algebras with operators are just ordinary hating algebras with an additional operator that we write as box, which preserves finite meets. Morphisms between hating algebras with operators preserve this new operator as well as all propositional connectives. Hating algebras with operators also arise as a category of dialgebras for a pair of functors. One of the functors is just the inclusion J of hating algebras into distributive lattices, and the other one N maps a hating algebra A to the distributive lattice generated by all boxed elements of A, modded out by the axioms that stipulate that box preserves finite meets. If we do this, we see immediately that the category of hating algebras with operators is isomorphic to the category of dialgebras for the functors n and j. So, we've seen that box frames arise as dialgebras for a pair of functors. We've seen that hating algebras with operators arise as a pair of functors. And moreover, we see that one of these functors is an inclusion. That's going to be the starting point of what comes next. Logics for dialgebras can then be modeled in a similar way to logics for coalgebras. One approach there is to start with a dual adjunction between a category of spaces that we write as C and a category of algebras. For example, spaces could be posets and algebras could be distributive lattices. Frames are then described by a functor T on the category of spaces, so T could be the upper power set functor, and the logic is given by a functor L on the category of algebras, together with a natural transformation rho of type LP to PT that defines the interpretation. For dialgebras, we simply add two subcategories to the picture, C prime and A prime of C and A respectively, with inclusions I and J. In our running example, C prime could be the category of intuitionistic Kripke frames viewed as a subcategory of the category of posets, and A prime the category of hating algebras, a subcategory of the category of distributive lattices. We also assume a dual adjunction between C and A that restricts to the chosen subcategories, but we don't need to require that the restriction is again a dual adjunction. Frames are then defined by a functor T from C prime to C, for example the upper power set functor that is sending a Kripke frame to a poset. Similarly, a logic is given by a functor L from A prime to A, and we could, for instance, map a hating algebra A to the distributive lattice generated by all boxed elements of A modulo the pertinent axioms. The last ingredient is a natural transformation rho of type L P prime to P T. For the semantics, we assume an initial L, J dialgebra that plays the role of syntax modular axioms 
i.e. something like a Lindenbaum Tarski algebra. We start with the given dialgebra gamma, where gamma maps ix to tx, and dualize this to p gamma, which maps ptx to px. Precomposition with a row at x then gives us the complex algebra of x comma gamma, which is a dialgebra for the functors l and j. The assumed initiality of the Lindenbaum-Tarski dialgebra then defines the interpretation. As a side remark, we just state that we can define both the functor L that defines the logic and the transformation rho that defines the semantics in terms of predicate liftings and axioms. In our running example of box frames, we just need to define the natural transformation rho that determines the interpretation of the logic. In the definition, A is an upset and we map box A to the collection of all upsets that are contained in A. The semantics is then the usual one where the interpretation of box I are all those states where all relational successes satisfy the formula phi. This quotient is taken in the category of distributed lattices. So our logic can only contain axioms with connectives in the category in <laughs> with distributive <laughs> This quotient is taken in the category of distributed lattices, so the axioms of our logic can only contain distributed lattice connectives. Soundness of our setup is automatic by construction, so let's have a look at completeness, or rather the contraposition of completeness. Any two non-equivalent formulae must be semantically distinguishable. This means that if we take any two distinct elements of the Lindemann-Tarski algebra, we need to find a dialgebra on which they differ. And this is indeed our definition of completeness. The source of the maps defining the interpretations is jointly monic. In instances, what we'll find is that the source is jointly monic simply because we find one single monomorphism among all the interpretation maps. To establish completeness, we're going to use general frames. General frames are basically just standard frames together with a bunch of admissible predicates. In our dialgebraic setting, this means that we have a dialgebra plus a subobject, which for all intents and purposes we can think of as a subalgebra, of predicates over this given dialgebra. So this sub-object must have the property that we can make it into an LJ dialgebra, which means we need to be able to close it under the syntax such that this maps into the complex algebra gamma star of our given dialgebra x comma gamma. The fill-in that defines the algebra structure will be unique if the inclusion functor J preserves monos. If this is the case, we can define a functor that we write upper plus that maps general frames to L, J dialgebras. One thing that is not terribly deep is that if this functor has a section on objects, we automatically get completeness. If we have such a section, we have a general frame x, comma, gamma, comma, a, such that upper plusing this gives the initial dialgebra psi that defines the syntax. But then the subobject a of predicates is equal to the set or rather the object of formulae modulo equivalence, and this embeds into p prime x i.e. the algebra of all predicates. What we then see is that the induced map is necessarily the theory map and it is monic by construction. Therefore, we get completeness.
The question is now, of course, under what conditions a section exists. One sufficient condition is the existence of a right inverse of a certain natural transformation that we've written as rho flat. If we were just dealing with an adjunction and not an adjunction and two inclusions, rho flat would be the adjoint mate of the natural transformation rho that defines the interpretation of a logic. If we look very closely at the diagram, we see that the rightmost unit does not live in the right category. That means we have to impose a very minor requirement that this unit actually restricts to a morphism in the chosen subcategory. In our running example of box frames, it's not difficult to define a section of row flat so that completeness for box frames follows. Let's have a look at a different example, and that is intuitionistic monotone modal logic. That is, we have intuitionistic propositional logic plus a box operator, and we stipulate that box is a monotone operator. The algebraic semantics for this logic is given by hating algebras with a monotone operator, and they also arise as a category of dialgebras for a pair of functors M and J. J is the inclusion of hating algebras into distributive lattices as before, and M maps a hating algebra to the free distributive lattice generated by boxing all elements of the hating algebra and modding out by monotonicity. On the frame side, we have a poset x equipped with a collection of neighborhoods n of x for each x. These neighborhoods are required to be upsets and upclosed under inclusion. Moreover, we require that the neighborhood functor n is compatible with the poset order. These also arise as dialgebras for a pair of functors i and w, where i is the inclusion of intuitionistic Kripke frames into posets, and w takes a poset to upclosed collections of upclosed sets ordered by inclusion. The interpretation of this logic is given by a natural transformation rho of type M after upsets to upsets after W, which is defined by mapping box A, where A is an upset, to the collection of all neighborhoods that contain A as an element. To understand the type of rho flat, Recall that we start out with the adjunction between distributive lattices and posets, and one part of this adjunction is the prime filter functor. In the slide, PF prime is the restriction of the prime filter functor to the category of hating algebras. With these preliminaries, the type of row flat is W after prime filters prime to prime filters after M. A right inverse of rho flat can be constructed with the help of the prime filter lemma, so that completeness also follows. There's a bunch of things that we haven't told you about, but you can find them in the paper. We have more examples, such as conditional intuitionistic logic and modal by intuitionistic logic. We also have a couple more results concerning prime filter extensions and expressivity. Then, there's also a bunch of things that we haven't told you because we simply don't know. One class of questions is which intuitionistic modal logics we can capture in our framework. We would like to develop it further to be able to capture modal logics in the style of fischer serby Plotkin and Sterling, and Simpson, and we would also like to be able to treat a larger class of base logics, such as relevance logic or sub-intuitionistic logic, for example, implicational meet semilattices. The question about examples that we can capture in our framework 
naturally leads to questions such as definability and Sarquist because the examples that we've mentioned above require a slightly different set of axioms that we would like to be able to treat uniformly. And finally, one question is whether we can do away with the requirement that one of our functors in the definition of dialgebras is an inclusion.